Hey everybody, welcome back for another super exciting Vesta tutorial. We have a really cool system in store today. I'm actually super excited about it. It is a uh, bismuth tellurium sort of binary system. I, I've never even heard of it before this. Uh, it's a super unique combination. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually constructing a quintuple monolayer, you know, something else I, I also haven't heard about, uh, but apparently it's there. You can see the picture or, or, or a picture in the link in the description. So on, in the description below, I have a link to an academic article. Uh, whether or not you can access the article, that's a different story entirely. But uh, you can see the system in here and you can see how they talk about the monolayer. Basically, what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to basically make that monolayer. So without further ado, let's open our bismuth tellurium system. Here I have the crystal structure already uh, generated the unit cell and so uh, if you're curious on where I get these how to get them please check out my beginner tutorial series I'll have a video on this also if you have not subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button this actually one of my subscribers asked me to do this and I said what the heck let's go ahead and do it and so if you subscribe too, you'll be first to get these videos before anybody else and uh, you know you ask me a question I'll I'll go ahead and make a video okay so what we're going to do actually is we're going to first cut the monolayer and we have to first identify what our monolayer even is going to be. And if you can see here, let's actually hit this A button. This is going to be our monolayer. It's, I guess, this like five, five layers. So you can see the first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer, fifth layer. And this whole thing is the quintuple monolayer. So we basically have to extract, make a unit cell that is just going to give us these atoms. And so it's pretty straightforward. It's a little tricky, but mostly straightforward. And so without further ado, I guess I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just completely cut around it. I'm going to press this A to center it. I'm going to completely cut around it. So there we go. So this is basically what we want to have. Uh, when we make it, but now what I need to do is I need to take into account periodicity factors. And I have another video. It's how to add vacuum to a P6MM space group, something like that. It's a tricky unit cell, just like this one. You know, the angles are not 90 degrees. And when you want to identify periodicity in these type of systems, it's pretty tricky. So please go check out that video. I think it's in the bulk crystals playlist. Anyways, so what we need to do is we need to basically destroy periodicity in this B dimension. And you can see here that would just means we need to cut out these atoms. And it's just, you know, when I show examples of where I do this with like cubic structures, you know, you learn that way. And then when you have these, you know, new angles, new, you know, new twists and turns, no pun intended, it can get a little tricky. Okay, so we have B dimension cut. Now you have to cut A dimension. That's actually just going to be these two here. Okay, so this is it. So now what we need to do is we need to save this as an XYZ. So what we can do is we can go to File, Export Data, and let's export it as an XYZ, and we'll call it the, uh, I guess this quintuple monolayer, this QML. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's not save hidden atoms. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Export Data, and I'm going to export this also as a VASP because this is what we'll end up editing. So we can go ahead and press <coughs> press Save. Uh, oh, no, I, I mean to do it as the quintuple monolayer. Not VASP. Okay, press Save. Cartesian coordinates. So now we'll come into our text editor, and what we're going to do is we are going to come into our XYZ file, take these coordinates and then go into our new VASP file, paste them in. Now what's really important is we have two bismuth for every three tellurium. So it's got this two to three ratio. So that's very important. So first thing I'm going to do is rename this. So I'll call this bismuth one or bismuth two tellurium three quintuple monolayer. Okay. And I then I'm going to realize I have two bismuth. So the first two are bismuth then the second three are tellurium. So it is still this two to three ratio, which is uh, good, I think. I think this is correct. 
basically six to nine is the same thing as two to three, just six to nine divided by three. So six divided by three is two, nine divided by three is three. So this should be good stoichiometry, you know, stoichiometrically. So let's save this. Then what we're gonna do is go back to Vesta and we're gonna open up our uh, BI2 TE3 quintuple monolayer VASP that we just edited. And now for the moment of truth, there it is. So this is our monolayer here. So uh, that's basically it. Now let's go ahead and change the atom color of tellurium to this sort of orangish. Press OK. Oh, beautiful. Now let's go to boundary and let's expand it uh, in the B, in the A3 and in the Y3. So there's our, there's our uh, unit cell right there. Basically, uh, that's, that's the monolayer expanded. It's pretty nice. Um, if you want to draw bonds, what you can do is this. Go to this thing over here, distance. Compute the distance between the bismuth and tellurium is about 3.1 angstroms. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go to edit, bonds, new. We'll make A1 tellurium, A2 bismuth, and we'll make this 3.2, just a little longer. Press apply. Press OK. OK, so it looks like uh, I'd like to make it a little longer so we can get, get these ones as well. So go back to edit, bonds. Uh, come here, we'll make it uh, 3.5 just because. That looks nice. Press OK. And yeah, there's basically our monolayer. Um, let's go ahead and space fill it. Um, and I guess let's expand it a little more just to see how it looks. Yeah, that, that looks really nice. Okay, so that's basically it. So if you're gonna use this, for example, in Quantum Espresso, um, what you would do is you would come back in your VASP and just put the atom labels here. So, you know, B-I-T-E, and basically these are the coordinates you would use in Quantum Espresso. So that's it, another video, very short and sweet. Take care, everyone. Uh, I'll see you next time.